Oh, you know, let me tell you, if, I, if you don't mind, just a quick story. I've been practicing law now for a long time, um, and I remember the earlier days when I would come down to the Eastern Shore as a lawyer um, on occasion to represent clients. And the Eastern Shore was still so, um, you know, reminiscent of, of, of the period of time before um, before integration they didn't have many black lawyers there. They still don't. There's mm-hmm. still not many black lawyers down there. Mm-hmm. But black women lawyers th- didn't exist. And I would come there, and this has happened. When, this happened every time. It wasn't once or twice. Every time, um, I would be asked multiple times by the court personnel, "Why are you here? Um, what are you here for?" And after I would say, "I'm a lawyer, and I represent this person or that person," they would say, "What are you? Are you? They, what are you a victim?" Are you um, wow. are you working with parole and probation? Like, what are you here for again? Like, they couldn't really grasp the concept that as a young black woman, mm-hmm. I was a lawyer. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's mm-hmm. Eastern Shore. That's that's my experience there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it is still is not. And I, about how long ago was that? <laughs> this is actually a long time ago. It's like twenty years ago. Because what I do is. Uh, I recruit I recruit teachers from other areas to come here, like African American teachers. And I always my argument is always, if you don't have family here, it's kind of hard to keep you in this area because of how how it's set up. You know, like those of us that live here, we know how to navigate the Eastern Shore because we've been here for years. But if you're not, I mean, like your experience is your experience, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing I was going call. I'm sure it probably hasn't changed that much. You have a big courthouse with one judge, and that judge would have known the person, all the people from the, the beginning of their life until now. And it was just so biased. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, yep. It was one judge who sat there and, and, you know, presided over everything. And so there's no way when, when people came in with an already having a bias from some other thing that the judge had, had, had heard, you know, it just wasn't, it just, it, it reminded me a lot, well, Honestly, I used to call it apartheid South Africa. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that's 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 pretty accurate. It's pretty. Accurate. What the great thing about having you come here though is is the fact that you, as inspiration of what they can be, particularly our young black women, mm-hmm. to see you know, look, you can attain this. You know, we have a sister here that's the twenty years. Because I see also I see um, that that you're celebrating twenty years, um, uh, Governor. Uh, Westmore is celebrating 20 years, December 14th. Uh, you be, being, um, you know, again, being in the Senate and, of course, the House of Delegates. Um, just talk about that real quick because I know sometimes once you're in the midst of everything and and everything's going on, you don't have time to really reflect. But, um, I mean, just for a second, just talk about that because that's incredible, 20 years. It, it, it's incredible, um, I would say, probably more than anybody could realize because, you know, I think that when we're not in – politics or in um in the game in, in the political arena ourselves um it's like the outside looking in it's very difficult to really really understand what is happening and i would say that um i have had a very different experience from the majority of elected people for the reason one as i already said i got elected my first time without any support whatsoever from the political establishment and i wasn't a political person Mm -hmm. so i didn't i was very naive to politics um and then when i got elected because you know people that were establishing politicians were very upset that i was there because i beat you know people that they thought should get in um Mm -hmm. you know they weren't kind to me and then on top of that i had a black agenda it wasn't mm-hmm. a contrived agenda. It was just innately my agenda from birth, mm-hmm. you know, fighting for my people. So all of those things added up to um, a very hostile environment within the political arena for me. And so it is truly amazing that I've survived 20 years, um, you know. And, and I, I don't want to say this, like, because I don't want to bring anything on myself, but, you know, I've survived and no scandal, mm-hmm. no, <laughs> no problem. You know, I haven't been elevated to top leadership positions um in large part because of of the dynamics of of what my priorities are Mm -hmm. um and also being a black woman it's it's a combination it's like a a double-edged it's a a double-edged sword in terms of um why the justifications for not elevating me 
to higher positions because I've now served longer than a lot of other people, yet they are surpassing me within the institution of the Maryland General Assembly. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, definitely. 